Someone was asking me today about putting together a sort of domination type volume. So I decided to put something together real fast. This is not visuals, so you will need to, of course, add your own emitters or however you want it to, you know, do. So you, there's a lot more work that can be done to this volume. But this will show you pretty much the gist of getting it going. Uh, now, if you, of course, want to have this working for like a team situation where you have like, uh, in for instance, in Unreal where you had the domination game, you had two teams fighting against each other, uh, there'll be obviously more work there as well because you'll have to set uh, your squad or team or whatever to make sure it knows uh, to count the points properly. But this will get the volume going. So what we're going to be doing is just creating two classes. We'll be creating a control volume, which is what I call it anyway, and we'll be creating a volume control timer. Um, the reason why the M is in front of each of my classes is because this is part of the membership game that I offer uh, tutorials on through my website at www.contagionentertainment.com and uh, so this is a f this uh, tutorial is obviously a free one. I'll be probably popping this on YouTube and on my website. But um, to get started, what we're going to do is, well, like I said, we have two classes. We have M Control Volume that will extend M Volume, but in your case, you could just do Volume. You don't have to do M Volume. If you just take the M away, in this case, it should still work fine. And we'll make that placeable because we want to be able to place it in our map. Then we'll have a few variables here. We have a variable bool called B Controlled. This, of course, is just to let us know it is controlled. Uh, if you're doing a team situation, you may want to do like B red control, B blue controlled, uh, to let to flip flop between whether which one has control of it or not. Then we'll do a variable control integer called control seconds. And the reason why I did this parentheses is so that you can, in the editor, when you place the volume in your map, you can double click on it, go to the control section, and then decide how many seconds it takes to take control of this volume. It's preset to 10 seconds. If you scroll down to default properties, I put control seconds equals 10. So it's preset to that, but you can change it to longer or shorter. It just makes it easier so you don't have to constantly change it in code. Then we have a variable integer called cur second count, which is just our current second counts as we're counting the, the timer. We have a variable info class, and we call it a control timer. And this is going to be an actual timer because volumes are static. You can't just you can't use timers for them, so you have to kind of attach a timer, so to speak, to it. Uh, so that's kind of what we're doing. Next, we have a event post begin play, uh, super dot post begin play because we want to keep whatever's before. And then here we're going to spawn our control timer, and our control timer is going to equal spawn class M volume control timer, and then self. So that's what it's going to spawn over here is the M volume control timer. So we'll go over here real quick. We have class M volume control timer extends info, and then we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to kind of create a version of the control timer. Uh, which is going to be the owner of of this actual timer, the volume rather, we're going to be creating the volume, which will be the owner of this actual timer. So we have variable m control volume mc, and then in uh, the post begin play, we're just going to set the the um, mc will equal to the m control volume, the owner, so the owner of the control volume. Then inside of event timer, we're just going to do mc dot control or start controlling and self. So we're going to pass in itself. Um, and then I put a log in here just to show you all that it's working when we run this called timer on. Uh, and then in default properties, we're just going to make sure the tick group's proper, it's not static, and there's no remote role. So once we have those things set up, uh, we can go back to the M control volume. And just so you know, this event timer is obviously what's going to be ticking for us. Now we haven't set how many seconds it's going to tick yet, but um, you know, it will. We'll obviously get to that in a second. So we'll jump over to the M control uh, volume, and inside of here, um, after the post begin play, where we spawn this actual timer, we're going to do an event and uh, event touch, and then we'll do super dot touch because we want to keep whatever the event had before, and then we'll say if uh, it is not controlled then we want to start the timer control timer dot set timer will run it every second and it'll loop now here's the thing if it is um, if it is a team situation we have blue and red you probably don't want to do this because um, in that case obviously if it's controlled uh, it doesn't matter who gets on it at that point if blue tries to take it back over it won't work so um, you obviously need to change this around a little bit for a team situation but for a single player just needing to take control of a section or something like that uh, this will work great so 
uh, if B controlled uh, is false, then we're going to start the timer. Um, that down into event untouch, when he actually walks away, we're going to set the current second count to zero, and we're going to clear the timer. We're going to turn it off. Now, if the player leaves the circle or the or the uh, the volume before he's finished, then he has to start all over. Now, you don't have to set it up this way, but in a team situation, you may want that because you may want to make it so if the guy's not willing to sit in that little area and protect it, then he deserves to have to start over to take control of it. So it's up to you, but that's the way I set it up. Down inside of function start controlling, if you go back to the M volume control timer, right there, that's the MC dot start controlling. So that's what gets called in the timer. Uh, so as soon as the timer gets called, this starts running. Uh, we're just going to add the current second count up, and then we're going to make sure it doesn't cross over our control seconds for the volume. If it does, we're going to set B control to true. I pop that log in there just so you all can see this working, and then control timer dot clear timer. So we're going to turn the timer off too. There's no reason to keep counting up if um, you know if we've taken control of the uh, actual. Uh, volume. Now you could even in here set uh, current seconds to zero, but um, really at that point, well, you know, at that point it really doesn't matter, but for a team situation you may want to do that, so we'll just do that anyway. Current second count will equal zero. And um, one more thing you may also want to do is just to make sure that the volume control timer being passed in is the correct one. We don't want this just popping up for anything. You can do MVC is equal to control timer and we'll just surround that inside the if and what that does is that just makes sure that the timer works for the proper volume we don't want it to bug out on us and kick in at the wrong time so once we have all that done uh, that pretty much will do this timer for us now I went ahead already and placed the timer into the map and I put it next to one of our little potions that we have going in for our game so I'm just gonna jump up here and I'll click make and it looks like it worked okay. These warnings are just because I don't have any animation on my character yet. So I'm going to go ahead and run the game and uh, I'm going to pause this while it loads. Okay, now we're in the game and uh, what I did was I kind of moved the um, the log over so you can see it. Now you can't see the volume because I haven't placed any emitters or anything like that to let us know where it is, but I put it right in front of the potion. So I'm just going to slowly walk over to the potion and there it is. Now you see at the left side it says timer on. That's going to click through 10, ten times and then when it clicks on its next one it'll hit um, controlled and turn off. And at that point it's no longer ticking. It's turned itself off. It's in control. If I walk away from it and then I walk back to it as you can see it doesn't start ticking again because it's in, it's controlled at this point so you can't control it twice so to speak. And that completes the end of this tutorial.